This tutorial will cover how I process M51 The Whirlpool Galaxy. While it can be accessed via the Hubble Legacy Archive, I have found this amazing resource from the Hubble Heritage team in the MAST Archive. The link will be provided in the description of this video. Scrolling to the bottom, there's a bunch of really cool data sets that can be downloaded and processed that were used for Hubble Heritage images. In the case of the Whirlpool Galaxy, all of the files can be found here under Downloadable FITS Files. Each of the filters that are needed for this image are on this page. You have 435 for blue, 555 for green, 814 for red, and 658 for a hydrogen alpha luminosity layer. Each of these file names are described up here. These 05 files are much larger at 420 megabytes each. The 20 files are much smaller at 26 megabytes each. Download whatever size image you would like and let's begin. Once you have converted them from a FITS file to a TIFF file using the FITS Liberator program, open up Photoshop, then go to File, Scripts, and load files into stack. Choosing the red, green, and blue files, we will add the hydrogen alpha luminosity layer later. By double clicking on the layer, I can rename it. And from here, going to image, mode, and RGB color, I can colorize the image. Using the quick layer colorization method, I will double click on the layer. Under advanced blending, unselect the green and blue to have a red layer. Unselecting red and blue for green. And unselecting green and red for blue. Photoshop will automatically blend these images together, or you can change the blending mode from normal to lighten. The bottom layer can remain at normal. From here, I will create a new layer. This layer will be a placeholder for my hydrogen alpha luminosity layer to be added on top. Then going to File, Open, I will open that hydrogen alpha luminosity layer. It will open in a new tab and under image, adjustments, and levels, I will alter my levels before I add this image to the stack. Then selecting the entire image and copying it, I will paste it on top of the layer. I will rename it to H alpha and delete my placeholder layer and double clicking on the H alpha layer and unselecting green and blue, I can colorize it red. Once again, Photoshop has automatically combined it, but you can also use the lighten, screen, or luminosity blending mode. From here, I will flatten the image. I will create a new layer. Then go to Image, Image Rotation 90 degree clockwise to orient it correctly. And going to the eyedropper tool, I will choose Color Sampler and find my black threshold point. I prefer to have a black threshold point where the red, green, and blue levels are relatively close to each other so that I can adjust the levels and make them even before I begin processing. I make sure that the levels are even right here, and from there, I can begin processing. Using a new layer, each time I add an enhancement, 
I usually start with the selective layer function under layer, new adjustment layer, and selective color. From here, I can enhance any of these colors, whether I want to add color or subtract color. Once that is complete, I usually will use the camera raw filter under filter, camera raw filter. This will allow me to enhance the details of the image. From here, I can mess around with any of these settings to bring out more details or brighten the image or sharpen it. There are also more tabs down here. I usually stick to the basic tab, but feel free to mess around and see if any of these will work for your image. If I need to remove noise, I can go to Filter, Noise, and choose any of these options to reduce noise in the image. This image does not have a lot of noise, and so I did not use any noise reduction for this image. If you would like to enhance a certain area of this image, maybe you just want to enhance the hydrogen alpha areas, you can go to Select, Color Range, and by using the eyedropper tool, you can click on various areas of the image that you would like to enhance. Using the fuzziness slider, you can select a greater amount of the area or a smaller amount, but it will be viewed in this box here. Sometimes you have to click around to find the exact areas that you want to enhance, but when you're happy with the area that it has chosen, select OK. From here, I can then use any adjustment layer under the Layer New Adjustment Layer tab and enhance only those certain areas that were selected. That is how I processed the Whirlpool Galaxy. Keep in mind that if you do choose to use a large file, it may take longer and download more slowly. Especially for me and my old computer, it definitely takes a long time in Photoshop to get some of these options to work. But the Whirlpool Galaxy is a very beautiful image, and I hope you enjoy processing this image.